Hello, welcome, how are you today? Hello, welcome, I'm glad you came my way to smile and share and laugh and care and sing a song or two. Hello, welcome, I'm glad to be with you. Hello, how are you today? I'm glad you're here. One thing that Crystal and I like to do is go hiking. We like to walk, sometimes with a group of friends, into the mountains or a valley or a canyon. I wanted to share with you a little bit of an experience we had a year ago. We went a little ways away from here to a mountain and on the way we passed a field and in the field we saw something. I want to show you a picture because I took a picture of it. Here you see. Do you see the cow? I call this an Oreo cow. Can you see the two black cookies with the white cream filling? Not really, it's a cow. But I call this an Oreo cow because it reminds me black on the sides and white in the middle. Now, cows are an animal that I wanted to talk a bit about today. They have an ability to do something that most of us don't do. But in many cultures, cows are seen as holy, sacred, to be treated very carefully and far different than many of us in our cultures would treat the cows. Here's why. Men or women who have been considered wise, they've been able to see and understand more than most of us do, have used cows as an example of being able to take what they're chewing, what they're eating, which is usually grass, and chew it, chew it, chew it, chew it, enjoy it, and swallow. And that grass that's been chewed will go down into a stomach. They're not finished with it yet. The cows have an ability to bring back up into their mouths what they've already chewed and chew it again. And when they're finished the second time, they swallow, but maybe they're still not finished. And we call this ability that the cows have, ruminate. Can you say that word? Ruminate. The cows ruminate. And wise men have used the cows to present a very important concept. They want people, when they're ready, to understand that to become wise like they did, one must ruminate, not in the same way that cows do, but in this way. When we bring something into our lives, when we do something, we have an experience, we're not finished with it unless we ponder it and we, we ask ourselves, now, now, why did I make that choice? Why did I feel the way I felt? Why did I see this other person or the experience, the opportunity, the way I did? Think about it, ponder it. Maybe bring it up in our mind over and over again. And in this way, 
through rumination, we can extract a lot of wisdom. Just like the cow ruminates on his grass to extract a lot of good, healthy nutrients that will help his body to be strong. Wise men have learned to ruminate about their experiences. Hmm. Now, what can I learn from this? What more can I learn? Maybe the next day or a few minutes later or the next year, if they've not finished all that they could with that experience. Hmm. Now, what can I learn? Okay, now I think I'm fully finished. I'm neutral. I'm in peace. I'm grateful that I had that experience, whatever it was, however difficult they have learned through rumination. Now, here's another story that I want to share with you. This story is about a man who lived all of his life in the jungles in Africa. And so had his parents before him and their parents before them for many generations. Their family had lived in the wild, thick jungles where there were so many trees, so many vines, so much vegetation, so many plants growing that that's what they saw. Sometimes they could see the sun shining through the sky if, if there were openings in the trees, but mostly those jungles were so thick with plants that they saw plants. Well, at one time, an anthropologist, a scientist who studies groups of people, he found his way into this particular jungle in Africa, and he met this man named Kenja, and he became friends, and they learned how to communicate, to talk, to understand each other, to teach each other. They became friends. Well, at some point, this man convinced Kinja, the jungle dweller, to leave the jungle with him, to explore what's outside of that jungle. And as they left the jungle, a whole new world opened up for Kinja. He had never seen grasslands. He had never seen such expansive fields and so much sky. He had never seen that. He, he didn't even have stories passed down from his family to help him to understand or prepare for that experience. And at one point, as these two men were walking together, Kenja looked up and he saw what he thought was an insect. There was something little tiny black. And he asked the anthropologist, his new friend, what is that insect? And the man laughed. He said, that's not an insect. That's a buffalo. Now, Kenja laughed. He thought, no, I know what buffalo look like. They're huge and big and sometimes have horns. That's not a buffalo. That's tiny. Well, to him, buffalo were a certain size. He had never seen in the jungle a buffalo far away so far that it looked like a tiny black spot. Life is like that for us. When we have an opportunity to open our eyes to a whole different way of looking at life, it was always there before, but we didn't see it. We didn't see it. 
But now, like Kenja, when we can open our eyes and see something we had never seen before, we really need to think deeply and ruminate like the cows and see it from a different perspective. Last week, last lesson, lesson three, we talked about how people who are so tall see the world differently than a person who's relatively short. Men and women see the world differently. They have different hormones going through their bodies, different ways that their minds, their brains work, different experiences that the culture trains them into. So do people who live all their lives as Eskimos, growing up where it's cold, they will see the world different than someone like Kenja, who grew up in the jungle, or as someone who grows up in the grasslands or on top of the mountains. They will all have different perspectives. Today we're going to explore that even further. All right, now look at this next picture. Do you see a fish swimming in his bowl? Probably a goldfish. Have you ever had a goldfish? I have. And goldfish swim and eat and poo, and swim and eat and poo. And after a while, the water in that goldfish bowl needs to be cleaned out. Otherwise, it's all mucky and dirty looking. And that poor fish has a hard time. He needs to do extra work to clean out and be able to breathe through that water. Well, sometimes I think about people being like goldfish and the atmosphere around our earth being kind of like a dirty goldfish bowl. So filled with experiences that people have had, but they haven't ruminated and learned from those experiences completely so that they still have some energy, some anger, some angst some out-of-balance feelings and memories about those experiences. Now look at this picture. Doesn't this look so much better when that goldfish bowl has been cleaned? Can you imagine how much more peaceful and joy-filled you will feel when you have ruminated and cleaned up any little thing that may still bother you about a person, about an experience that you had. When you can come to peace or to balance so that there is nothing causing you to wiggle wobble or be up or down about a certain experience or opportunity, a choice that you had, a choice you made. Okay, now I would like to share with you about an experience that I had when I was about 16 years old. My family moved to a new house, new to us, and behind the house, there were chickens in a chicken coop. And we would go out every day and feed those chickens and gather the eggs. But not only were there chickens in this chicken coop, there was a goose. Sometimes farmers or others who raise chickens will have a goose in with their hens to protect the hens. 
Now, geese can be very, very protective. And the goose that we had was, we called her Goosey Lucy. When I would go out to feed the chickens and to gather any eggs, I would have to help myself be brave and strong in my power before I went out because Goosey Lucy, in order to do her job, what she felt deep inside was what she was supposed to be doing in order to do that. She would make it very difficult for anyone, any animal, any person, to get near those hens. So even though I was trying to help her and the hens by feeding them, Goosey Lucy would come charging. And sometimes she bit me or tried to bite me. And sometimes I would drop my basket and run and then tell myself, I can do this. I can be strong. And I would go and eventually I would feed those chickens. Well, I found a picture of another goose that looked like my Goosey Lucy when she was charging. Although this goose in this picture is skirting across the water, my goose wasn't. My goose was just running towards me on the land, on the ground. But I wanted you to see a picture of what her face looked like. Now, I will read to you a story about a goose. This story is called Silly Goose. And it was written and illustrated by Jack Kent. We'll put on my glasses to make it easier. Silly Goose. One day, the goose went jogging through the woods. Silly. Geese don't go jogging through woods and geese don't wear clothes or shoes. But in the imagination of the author, this goose did. One day, the goose went jogging through the woods. The fox was jogging too. Good morning, the goose said cheerfully. Silly goose, said the fox. It's afternoon. So it is, the goose said, glancing at the sun. As they jogged along together, the fox mumbled, some folks are too dumb to know how dumb they are. After a while, the goose said, look out, that elm tree is falling. She ran off the trail to get out of its way. But the fox just kept on going. Silly goose, the fox said, as the tree fell on him. This is an oak tree. So it is, the goose said, noticing the acorns. The goose wasn't strong enough to lift the tree off the fox. She thought and thought. Then she dug some of the ground away from under the fox so he could crawl out. As they jogged along together, the fox mumbled, some folks are so dumb they don't know an oak tree from an elm. 
at the edge of the swamp, the goose stopped short. Look out, she said. There's a crocodile. But the fox just kept on going. Silly goose, the fox said as the beast swallowed him. This is an alligator. How can I get him out of the crocodile, the goose wondered, or the alligator, as the case may be. She thought and thought. At last, she pulled out one of her tail feathers and tied it to the end of a long pole. Then she tickled the alligator's nose with the feather. It made him sneeze. <gasps> and out came the fox. As they jogged along together, the fox mumbled, some folks are so dumb, they don't know an alligator from a crocodile. After a while, the goose said, Look, look out! Here comes a vulture! She hid behind a tree. But the fox just kept on going. Silly goose, he said, as the bird flew away with him. This is an eagle. The goose didn't have much time to think. The eagle was getting away. She flew after the eagle, who wasn't flying very fast because the fox was heavy. When they were over a small lake, the goose landed on the eagle's back. The eagle was so startled, he dropped the fox, who fell into the lake and swam ashore. As they jogged along together, the fox mumbled, Some folks are so dumb, they don't know an eagle from a vulture. After a while, the goose said, Look out! Here comes a... Here comes a what? said the fox. Let's get it right this time. The goose pushed the fox into a hole and covered him with leaves. I don't know what it's called, she said, as a fox hunting party rode by. They were looking for foxes. But I know enough to get out of its way. Now, in this book, this story tells us about a silly goose, and she was. There was so much she did not know, and she got wrong. But what she did get right was her desire to help, to protect. And the fox, as in many stories about foxes, the fox was being crafty and sly. And he was thinking that he knew best and he could take and he could choose the life that he wanted without being in balance, without thinking what's best for everyone. How can I help everyone? So here we have two completely different perspectives. One, the fox, I don't need you, you're wrong. And the goose, I may be wrong, but I'd like to help, may I help? In lesson two, we learned a new song whose words were written by Christina Rossetti a long time ago.
And the music I wrote fairly recently. This is the song, What Shall I Give Him? In this song, I want you to consider what do I have? What gifts, what abilities, what skills, what personal experience do I have to help others with? Like the goose, it was her ability to protect and help. Every one of us has something special, something unique that we have to offer. As we sing this song, just like the shepherd or the wise men or the young child singing the song, you consider what you have to give, to offer to others, whether it's Jesus, like in the song, or your friend, your sibling, your parent, anyone else in your life. You think about what you have to give. What shall I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him, give him my heart? Let's sing that again. Ready? What shall I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what shall I give him, give him my heart? Nice. Do you remember I told you about the Oreo cows? and how in their middle they were white but on both ends they were black so they looked like an oreo cookie black white black we could say that in the middle or in the heart of the cow is white well in your heart in the center the middle of you. You are white. You are precious and pure and so beautiful. And when you learn how to come from that middle place and keep your perspective from your heart, just like we sang about, I will give my heart when we live from what we call our heart, our middle, we can find wisdom and joy and peace. Last week, I told you about being given a puzzle long ago. But it wasn't a typical puzzle with different pieces that all had a space to fit into. It was what is called a 3D puzzle. Do you remember that story? When I put the picture up on the wall, I couldn't see it until I was taught how to look. Now here's a book of 3D puzzles. And here we have a picture and it looks like just random colors, lots of different colors. Do you remember the picture that I showed you? Did you find what was hiding in that picture? Let's look at it again. 
Here's the hint. Don't look at the picture. So if the picture was a book, don't look at the paper. Look under it, several inches, maybe about right here behind the book. Since you're looking at the picture on your screen, don't focus your eyes on the screen, but look beyond. Focus your eyes behind the screen, several inches behind it. Let your eyes relax, be soft, and focus. It's almost a little bit like you're going cross-eyed just a little bit. So look again at this puzzle. See if you can see by looking beyond the screen. Do you see it yet? There is something in it. I'll give you a hint. This is something that you may have in your house, in your kitchen. What is in the picture is a teapot. This is my teapot. Picture doesn't really look like this. Mm -hmm. I have a better picture than my teapot to hopefully help you. Look at this next picture. This is a teapot. It's facing the right direction and it's pretty much the same shape. The handle is on this side, the left, and the spout is on the right. It does not have a lid on, it's open. And the pot is round, pretty smooth and round. Can you see it now? Just let your eyes relax, look behind the screen. If you can't see it yet, that's okay. It took me a long time to see that first 3D picture. If you practice this, the day will come when you can't see it. And if you continue practicing with different pictures, the day will come when it's pretty easy for you to look and to see 3D pictures. Well, I want to share with you something that is so important and fun. When you learn to look at your life and ruminate about your experiences, the day will come when you will be able to see hidden lessons, hidden truths, and wonderful jewels expensive, valuable insight that will help you to feel stronger, more peaceful. As you do this, the day will come when everything will shift, everything will change in your life. You'll still look like the same person, maybe. You'll still like many of the same things, You'll still have many of the same friends, many of the same skills, but your whole world will shift. And this has been a mystery, a very important mystery that many wise men have given clues to. Today, I will help you if you're wanting, if you're ready, to be able to take those clues and really use them better than you ever have before. Look 
at this next picture. Here we have a person who is actually splitting a piece of wood, not with a saw, not with an ax, but with the edge of his hand. Don't try it yourself, but I have done this. Here is the clue. You do the same thing with that piece of wood that I've been teaching you to do, to see clearly and deeper what is hidden in life. I was taught that when you have a block of wood, that you know you can't, you can't break. But a deeper knowing is, yes, you can, if you do it correctly. When you look at that wood, and then you look behind the wood, and you see with your mind's eye, your hand is your hand has gone all the way through it, and it's several inches behind that. When you have this block of wood, and you use one decisive wallop with the, slack, the side of your hand, and you wallop that wood, knowing that your hand and seeing that your hand is already behind a piece of wood. It breaks. Easy. There's no pain. Just a little kind of a sizzling on your hand. And now you have two pieces of wood. Again, don't, don't practice that until you really are ready. But it's the same concept. When you look behind what seems to be the obstacle and you see beyond it that it's already done, your hand's already through. When you focus your eyes on the picture and you know, I can do this, and you look beyond the screen or beyond the page deeper, then you see what was hidden before. This is a very important secret in life. Many wise men have left clues. One named Jesus left the clues in writings, ancient writings about his experiences. It is said that he said, it is finished. Now, he said these words when he still had, he still had a mission to do. He still had important work that was not absolutely finished. But in his mind, he saw it was all done. It was all done. And he was living in what we call eternity. He was living in the state of mind of pure peace and understanding. And that place only comes from power and knowing how to look and act and be in your life. So when Jesus said, it is finished, in his mind, he was looking through the obstacle he was aware the obstacle still existed. He still needed to physically walk through it. But in his mind, he was in a place of power. It's done. I've already done it. This is so important that we always keep our mind in that place of power. No obstacle no matter how painful, no matter how difficult, 
if we walk to it and we see in our heart, in our center, this is important for everyone that I keep walking through this with the awareness, the perspective. It's already finished. My hand's already through the wood. I've already figured out how to see that 3D puzzle, or I've already walked through and completed this obstacle. It's already done. It is finished. Then it is so much more easy. And we can do it. I'd like to share with you, and I'll use my sweater to give you the lesson. Let's pretend that you are an ant and you're right here on the very edge of my sweater. But you want to be here. Can you see this seam right here? You want to be right there. And you see that here's your obstacle. Here's the path that you need to get through. Well, scientists have told us, and time seems to suggest that the very shortest way between point A and point B is a straight line. So with that thinking, if you were an ant, and it was very important to you that you get from here to here, you wouldn't want to go all back and forth. You would want to walk straight on the edge. Or you could do something else. Instead of a straight line being the shortest distance between two points, there is something else. And I will use my whiteboard because this is another big word. All right. This big word Tesseract, tesseract. Can you say that word? Tesseract. Let me show you one way to understand a tesseract. We'll go back to our ant wanting to go from point A to point B. And instead of going all the way around, maybe across my whole body or throughout the whole room or my sweater, instead of doing that and going a long, time-consuming way to point B, and instead of a straight line, which many people believe is the shortest way between two points. Instead, that ant, if he was in his power, if he pictured himself already finished, he could wrinkle, fold, point A to meet point B. And then it's an easy step. One step, he's there. So a tesseract means to fold or to wrinkle, to bring your present situation to the place where it's already finished. You're already there. 
we fold time. We fold our life experience. And we realize it's completed. It is finished. That is such an important lesson. Will you be like a cow? Will you ruminate about that? Again, the idea is, in life, we can either walk step by step through what we call time. We can have seconds, hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries. We can measure our life through time. Or we can choose instead to see ourselves and everyone else living and enjoying and experiencing a future place where all is beautiful, everyone is healthy, all is in peace, only kindness and love exists, everyone is happy. Would you look at this picture now? I like this picture. To me, this represents the place where everything is in balance. All the trees, all the animals, the water, every person is in balance and feels happy. Let's sing our song, I am happy. I am happy, I am happy. Yes, I am, yes, I am. I am fun and cheerful, I am fun and cheerful. Joy, 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 joy. Very nice, thank you. I have shared so much today. You may want to view this video again and like a cow, ruminate and ponder and think about it and apply the parts that you feel to and get more and more understanding from today's video, just like the cow. Choose his cud over and over again so that he can get all the nutrients from it that he, that he possibly could. Let's sing our song, Smiles. Do you remember all of our friends and how one person smiling can change the world? One day I smiled at Heather, and Heather smiled at Jim. Jim smiled at Eric, and Eric smiled at Kim. Kim smiled at Jeffrey, and Jeffrey smiled at John. John then smiled at someone else, and so that smile went on. It went from door to door. It went across the sea. It traveled all around the world and came back home to me. When you smile from your heart, from the deep place of peace and gentleness where you see everyone as your equal, and we are all necessary and wonderful. When you smile and live and think and feel from that place, your heart, you truly can change 
the world for good. And that brings you more happiness than anything else. Much more happiness than when you just live your life for what do I want? What's good for me? Instead, remember, what is the best for we, for all of us, long term? If you have a recorder and would like to play with us our song, I Am Happy, would you stop the video if you don't have it and go get it? Then we can all sing together or play if we have our recorder. Here is my recorder. I'll get my fingers in position. Remember when we play the recorder, we whisper, we play it so soft and gentle. We make sure our fingers are covering every hole that we need to play. Let's see if I can make the hardest note clear and correct. Nope. There we go. So C, lowest note on my recorder is middle C. If you do not have a recorder or another instrument that you can play along with us, would you sing, I am happy, and Crystal will sing it with you. Ready, and. I am happy, I am happy, yes I am, yes I am, I am fun and cheer. talk more about these ideas and if you don't understand them completely that's okay that's okay continue to ruminate to ponder and we will talk more about the tesseract about how to live with our mind in a place of beauty and perfection and balance eternity and in that way, be able to make our choices from a place of peace and power that's correct for all of us, all of us together. I love you. Would you stay happy this week? Would you smile as often as you can and think about living from your center like the Oreo cow that's white? bright, pure, in your middle, in your heart. I love you. Goodbye. Goodbye for now, but I know somehow we're never far apart. Goodbye for now, but I know somehow you're always in my heart. I carry you in my heart. I hold you in my